Hey YouTube, welcome to part 2 of the Easy Lift Project. We'll finish off the build in this episode, and I hope you enjoy it. On with the show. That's the handle here. I smoothed off the wells, blended them in, drilled the holes for it, I bolted it together really tight. Now I'm just going to go around with the grinder and make them both meet up perfectly because they pulled a little bit when they were welded. You can see there's maybe a millimetre and a half, about a sixteenth of an inch difference there. And same there, so I'll just grind those bits off and make them look the same round off the corners. And it should be ready to paint and assemble. I've got all the parts of the Easy Lift here. I've ground these off, they're nice and even now. Probably not as pretty as if I'd cut it out of a single piece or used the forge to bend a, a nice curve. But nevertheless, it'll do the job. Now we can see about putting them together. Hopefully, it's all going to fit. Oh dear, oh dear. Hmm. Oh, well, it went wrong somewhere. I mismeasured something, that's for sure. I'm not quite sure what yet. I'll have to check the plans. But it is fixable. I've just got to drill different holes there. I did something I don't do very often. I measured the distance between these holes and I've got it wrong. Not quite sure how that happened. They're supposed to be 65 millimetres apart and somehow or other I made them 45. And I didn't notice it and I drilled them. Of course I noticed it when I went to assemble it and it's not fitting. So what I'm going to do, instead of just measuring it, I've put one bolt through here. I'm just going to mark this other one exactly where it needs to go. So basically you can go anywhere on the arc centred on this bolt and passing through that mark there. I'll get a punch and punch him now. Heavier hammer wouldn't hurt, but never mind. Multiple hits with this one will do the same job. Now that that's done, we'll bolt them together so that I can drill them both together and get them both exactly the same. I did the drilling off camera, and this time I'm quite certain that I got the holes in the right spot. I actually put it together and used a punch to mark the position of the holes this time, so there could be no doubt. Nevertheless, I am going to assemble it just to make sure. I cut a piece off the threaded rod that's long enough to go through here. Okay, it's not obvious how this is meant to work. Like that, you lift up on this and it pushes that in together and you can lift the plate that you're trying to lift. Let's see if I can demonstrate it with this here. I might have to do something about putting a stop there so it doesn't come out too far. About there, something here, it needs a little lip there to stop that lever going any further than that. Okay, there we have it. Lift there, like that. Yeah, well, a couple of little bits of scrap on the back here, I think, could work. I was a little bit of rubber on the inside surface, just to give it a grip. This is a piece of outdoor mat. Don't know what it's made out of. It looks like it might be made out of recycled car tyres, but it's rubber anyway. And if I glue it on there with the rubber base of it out, and the same on this side too, that should give it a nice non-slip grip to grab hold of the sheet with. Before I put rubber on there, I'm going to weld those extra couple of stops on. Then I'll glue the rubber on and give her a paint up. Right, I found two little pieces of scrap here and I've tested them 21 millimetres back from the end. That's three quarters of an inch plus a bit. Probably three quarters of an inch plus three sixty fourths of an inch. Somewhere around that area. Best to just fit it up and see how it feels. It opens and closes it's all right. I'll go and clean it up after I've tacked these in place. But now that I've got them set up perfectly, I don't really want to have to take them off and put them on again. Now it doesn't need it for strength, but I'm going to do the edges of this anyway. More for appearance than anything else. Alright, that's got that welded on. Yep, in the perfect spot. Now, the last thing I want to do, I guess, is to just grind these stops off a little bit so they look nice and neat. Now, here's one of the tabs. You can see it a little bit better there, I hope. Once I welded it on, I just gave it a little bit of a bevel up in there, so I left the ledge there for the handle to sit on. Just neatened it up a little bit, took the sharp corners off of it. 
and sits down there like that. So far, so good. Really happy with the way it's going so far. Now it's just a matter of waiting for it to cool down because she's still really, really hot from the welding. Give it a bit of a grind off here and there. Fix the bolts up so that they won't come undone. Then I will paint it and glue the rubber on. And then of course we can have a look and see how it works. For my next trick, I'm going to plug up these holes that I drilled in the handle in the wrong spot because I didn't measure them properly. I still don't know how I managed to commit such a heinous crime. Not the usual practice for me to mismeasure. I usually measure two or three times. The uh, only thing I can think is I just misread the tape. I've got this bit of thread here, which just happened to be the first thing I picked up, which was the right diameter to fit in the hole. So I'm just going to sit that in there. I'm going to weld it in, I've got another piece for the other side and then by the time I grind them off you'll probably never know I made such a stupid mistake. Got a nasty weld from that side. Ah, best one yet. That one hardly needs a grind. Cut that one a bit long, he'll need a good grind. The inside pieces went better than the outside. Which is probably a good thing because I don't think I can get a grinder in there anyway. Alright, put that aside to cool. And I've just got to give him a final polish up and a paint and put the rubber on and he is done. Well these are the pieces of the easy lift. I've got them painted up now. I'm going to cut a piece of rubber to go on each one. So if I've mentioned this in the earlier section of the video. I'm making this out of an outdoor mat that I found. As you can see, that's the outside of it. Uh, that's going to be the inside. I'll glue that against it and leave this rubberized surface exposed to help grab whatever sheet I'm picking up. Make it slightly smaller rather than larger so it doesn't get caught on anything and ripped off. Theory, anyway. Peel and glue on like that. A little bit of contact. And that will glue up in there like that. And the easiest way again to glue this will be as if we're lifting something and I can use the weight of the handle to help hold him onto the table. This other one I'll just sit him on the table and glue and sit something heavy on him. Now, to go and find some contact adhesive. Yeah, it's a bit more porous on that side than I thought it was going to be. Soaking in a bit. Might need to be a little bit more generous. Mm, that's the glue I put on there. <laughs> Gee, they don't fill these tubes real good these days. Full of air, just to make you think you're getting more than you do. Oh, good grief. <laughs> I don't believe it. Half a tube. Handy hardware. Okay, well, make a note. Don't buy their crap again. I don't begrudge anyone making a profit. I do begrudge them ripping off the consumer and making them think that they're getting more than they actually are getting. Oh, look at that. Almost completely empty after one job. Geez, that would have only been a quarter full of fat, I reckon. There you have it. That was from Handy Hardware. Be aware that they are very deceptive in the amount that you actually get when you buy their product. Yep, second tube's full of air too. That's it. Second tube empty. I'll leave them sit there for a while, once the contact dry, once the contact's dry, I'll bolt them back together and give them a test out. Almost job done. Now that all the glue's dry and the rubber friction pads are firmly attached, it's time to do the final assembly and give it a test. See if it works as good as I planned. Now this little board hardly does the easy lift justice for a demonstration purpose, but it is what I have handy at the moment. So you just put the easy lift there, about in the centre so that it's nice and balanced. 
and you can pick up your sheath just like that. The design of the easy lift ensures that the weight of the sheet helps hold it in, clamps it really securely. Anyhow, it has a nice quick build. Now the only other thing I would suggest, I couldn't do it because I haven't got an AC TIG welder, do aluminium. So I was limited to steel and you could do this in aluminium and it would be a lot lighter. I guess that would be preferable in some ways but I'm happy with what i got, it'll work well. Okay well this is the first use of the easy lift in earnest. I've got a heavy piece of sheet to move now, it's a sheet of 1.2 metre by 2.4 metre by 3 mil. And for the Americans looking at this, that's 8 feet by 4 feet by 1 eighth of an inch. So it's a pretty substantial lift and something I couldn't lift without the easy lift. And I've got it all hooked up there ready to go. She just sits over it like that. Make sure it's roughly in the middle so that everything's nice and balanced. And as you lift it, she'll clamp itself on. I've got this old coat here I'm just going to put over my shoulder to try and take some of the weight on this because she's going to be a heavy lift. Damn, I wouldn't plan on that. That was a heavy lift, and there's no way that I could have done that without the easy lift by myself. Even with the easy lift, it was quite an effort. I'll put the weight of that as a subtitle in the video, because that was a real effort. Hey, thanks for watching, I hope you found it informative. If you do decide to build one of these, just plans on my website, you can download it for free. And if you do build one, just remember that accidents can always happen and please stay safe. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more videos. Until next time.